Oh, I was born here in 1927. People out in the country didn't have electricity. In the rural areas, they were stuck without it. When you look at that time, uh, you see a lot of hardship in the region, a lot of abject poverty. The Federal Columbia River Power System was constructed in part to bring power to rural America. The choice for rural electrification, which began in the early 30s, is heroic in changing lives, especially women's lives. It was a terrible job doing the laundry. Everything had to be ironed. A lot of women got burnt bad. So much hard work. We couldn't get electricity unless we built the line ourselves. Bonneville actually hired people to go out and help form rural electric cooperatives. They, they brought light and they brought life to a lot of regions of the Northwest that otherwise would not have it. During World War II, uh, it was the Grand Coulee that furnished a lot of electricity for the defense program. It was the biggest thing on earth and we were building it. It was an American project built by Americans in a time of great economic distress. The timeline of when they envisioned these major hydropower projects until they got them done is incredibly short from a historical perspective and it's an amazing feat. The high voltage transmission grid has been every bit as vital to the Pacific Northwest. It's a freeway, yep, a toll road. You know, by the 60s and the 70s we had you know, a power system that truly was the envy of anybody around the world who would take a look at it. Salilo was built in the late 60s to get a large amount of power long distance. We were the largest and longest line in the, in the world. It's 846 miles long and goes to Somar, California. And 3,100 megawatts is, uh, is a lot of power. During the spring when we have excess water in the Northwest, we convert that power to DC, ship it to California. It's over doubled in size since the station originally was built. Expanding the station, increasing the capacity from 31 to 3800 megawatts will increase our reliability. So we can get more substation in a smaller footprint. And it just takes a lot of people to keep a, keep a station like this running. When your friends ask, what does your husband do? We're out here keeping the lights on. Well, he's a lineman. I've only been a lineman here for a year. He climbs towers and he helps, you know, power your city. Yeah. And we have to be able and proficient at, at so many different things. You don't really think about your electricity until it's not working. From our basic understanding of electricity to be very proficient at climbing. It's a scary job. If somebody does get injured up there, we have the know-how to go rescue them. During storm season, you kind of stay up at night and wonder, are they safe? Are they okay? We take a lot of pride in this power system. My husband works for Bonneville Power, one of the safest organizations. We want a good, safe, reliable product at the end of the day. How's your day at school, buddy? Every time the power's out, or any time that you flip on a switch and kind of say a little prayer that, you know, we thank alignment for that. Most people, they have no idea uh, the work, the investment, the knowledge that was necessary to make that light come on when they flip that switch. By seeing what it takes, maybe they'll use it more efficiently.